Thank you, Kim, for the intro, and thanks for reminding us about the poll. We'll get to the results straight after this presentation. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me here today. So far, we've spoken about some of the benefits of going online, the production value, and how some simple gadgets and minor adjustments can improve the look of a presentation. What we'll do now is speak just a little bit about the cost of bringing your event online or running a virtual event. Of course, this is a super broad topic and we don't presume to know all, uh, all the answers, but I'm sure many of you here today have experience in running events, so I won't dwell too much on what that would entail. Instead, I'll be focusing on some of the specific items and their costs when bringing it online. Yes, the beauty of virtual events is that there are no venue or travel costs, meaning that in their nature, they are likely to be much more cost effective than physical events. That being said, as with all things, quality comes with a price, especially so in the production aspect of doing an online event. But we'll get, that, we'll get to that soon enough. So let's talk about the types of virtual events and what they generally cost. These numbers I'm going to present here are based on quotations and estimates received from our vendors and partners, as well as researching easily available information online. For the sake of today's discussion, I've broken down virtual events into three main areas. They are namely one, webinars and internal uh, events, two, virtual conferences, and three, trade shows or exhibitions. Now, there are dozens of ways that these kind of events can intersect by way of definition and program structure, but I think we'll try to keep within these peripherals for today's uh, discussion. So firstly, for webinars, what are they? Uh, a webinar, uh, everyone knows it's a combination of the word web and seminar, is a video workshop, lecture or presentation hosted online. Often business related, uh, they last for about 30 to 60 minutes and they typically use video conferencing tools that allow Q&A, the ability to present live or a pre-recorded video. Some examples would be uh, internal training sessions, uh, product demonstrations or live workshops, for example. Uh, under the same umbrella of cost that we're going to talk about today would be the other internal events. So what are they? These are town halls, sales kickoffs, uh, trainings, uh, once again trainings, uh, department meetings, uh, annual general meetings or AGMs uh, and the like. So AGMs are one of the first meeting types to go online and live during the circuit breaker period in Singapore uh, and the practice might just carry on even past the pandemic as they've been super successful crossing over to the virtual realm. So even before the current COVID-19 situation, international organizations were already holding uh, internal hybrid events. It was a platform to present a message to the entire company when employees are not all gathered in the same place are not allowed to for certain situations, say, say like a pandemic. So for the overview of costs, for a simple webinar, the cost could be as low as $200 to $3,000, with costs uh, mainly going into the subscription fees and, uh, for the teleconferencing app or webinar software subscription. You can sometimes get free services um, if you're happy with the short meeting time and the limited number of people that can join into the meeting and stuff like that. It's also great when exploring the right platform for you, so remember to try before you buy. Popular ones would be Zoom, WebEx, and Webinar Ninja. Yep, that's the thing, and it's a pretty cool one too, so check it out. You probably won't need an event manager for, or a production company for something like this, just a reliable webinar platform that's easy to use. For the other internal events, let's use uh, the AGM as an example again. It could cost as little as the subscription fees, or up to $20,000, depending on how elaborate the reports are um, and, and, and who the board of directors will be reporting to, what kind of image the company wants to portray to its shareholders, and whether or not an event management company is even needed. So for example, using a production company that specializes in streaming videos to set up their equipment in the boardroom can cost the top end of that, that, that range, whilst using uh, the Cisco WebEx system for people to call in to present numbers to shareholders would, would just cost the, year, the yearly subscription. So that's why the numbers can be quite vast and, and, and very different. So for virtual conferences, what are they? Uh, these are the events that require a few more features than, than webinars. Virtual conferences have an agenda that includes uh, plenaries, keynotes and breakouts. So like in-person events, they include multi-session breakout content and, and most even have an audience interaction system like polls and gamification to keep them engaged. So vir virtual conferences also allow attendees to interact with other attendee attendees through live chats and private meeting rooms uh, so, so they can network as well. So basically, it's kind of like attending a live conference, uh, 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 in-person live conference, except not being able to bump into someone uh, at the espresso machine and talk about how much you, you love coffee and, and the buffet uh, here and chit-chat about the business or the company that you represent. Uh, we all miss that, I'm sure. Um, it will be coming back, hopefully soon. 
So for the overview of costs, between 20,000 and 100,000 or higher, depending on the number of speakers, external studios in various countries to record the presentations, uh, prof the professional hosts if you need it, the IT peripherals and the systems for going live, interaction system for delegates, multi-room virtual hosting platforms, I think the, the variations are endless when it comes to this. Um, although so far, I, I, I would say a pretty high percentage of the surprise costs would, would be coming from the, the studio time and post-event editing. Uh, obviously, the better the production quality, the higher the price can go. So this is not a usual on-site event cost. So it's something to look out for and plan for as well when you're planning to bring your event online. So for the third type of event that I want to speak about uh, would be the trade shows and exhibitions. So what are they? Self-explanatory, I suppose. And these are the large-scale industry conferences or trade shows that usually garner at least 1,005 to 2,000 participants uh, when held as an in-person event. To go online, these kinds of events require higher levels of video production so that uh, virtual attendees pr uh, provided a similar quality to in-person attendees, especially when going hybrid. So special features could be online virtual booths for the exhibitors, augmented reality capabilities for special products, uh, virtual reality tours, customized apps, and a whole slew of technology uh, to, 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 to make sure that the event stands out and is memorable for the delegates. Now, it is challenging though to provide the same value at external uh, hybrid events. Uh, one of the main reasons for this would be that in-person attendees can network more freely uh, and engage easily with content than those attending virtually. Uh, but once again, that being said, it also can be more beneficial being online uh, with the correct strategy. But we'll leave that one for now because we're only running through costs today. So for the overview of costs, for example, with 10 or more speakers, uh, dedicated recording studios and a professional platform for streaming the event, costs could be in the region of 250000 and can escalate pretty quickly. Uh, with the various uh, requirements like on, for, for an online trade show, matchmaking, gamification uh, for delegates, uh, post-event deep data analytics and targeted marketing, pre- and post-event uh, event and so forth, um, hitting a million dollars for an international online conference or, or a trade show is not as far-fetched as it sounds. Okay, so now we've spoken about the general uh, range of costs uh, of virtual and online events. Here are some costs that we just want to highlight while you're planning or thinking about bringing your event online. Firstly, talking about audiovisual or AV. For larger and more complex events, uh, I recommend outsourcing uh, the production work to AV professionals. Uh, that's especially if you don't have an in-house team. By doing this, you can focus on the content and speakers while the tech and production side is taken care of. Uh, plus, using a professional AV company makes the whole event look so much more uh, uh, polished and professional. So the second key component for larger events is to have a good video team. You don't need a full-scale uh, production house, but, what, uh, but having a, a, a professionals who can film quality interviews, uh, presentations, and, and panel sessions can make a great deal of difference when presenting the final product to your delegates and online viewers. The post-edits are also just as key in keeping the attendees' uh, attention by something as simple as uh, having different camera angles or uh, superimposing stuff like this as I present here. So aside from um, the smooth running of the event and, and content development, you're also going to need an IT tech team to help out if anything goes wrong. If this happens, it can be both embarrassing and costly. So investing in a great tech team who can fix anything and everything is really important and it'll ensure your, your event runs smoothly. So we don't hold back on the safety and backup for physical events when it comes to miti uh, mitigating Murphy's Law. So I think the same should be done for uh, online events. Uh, and now for the most basic but um, oftentimes overlooked item, ensure you have a good internet facility. You cannot neglect the cost of a good internet. Uh, try to connect via the physical landline, obviously, if you can, um, and not Wi-Fi. Uh, having a backup is also a redundancy is also a good idea. It's going to cost you a little more, but it's worth it when it's really needed. So the next thing I wanted to mention would be on the delegates experience. The beauty of going virtual is that you don't have to fork out for any of the printer collateral or goodie bags. Not only does this make your event just a little bit more uh, sustainable, um, we, all, we are all trying to save the planet after all, um, but it saves money. Uh, so example would be some e-vouchers that can be downloaded from, uh, by delegates and speakers, for example, to, to, to get their, their caffeinated beverage at, at their, their closest Starbucks. So some, with some planning, this also can be arranged for, for international delegates, that is, if a Starbucks is if the Starbucks where they are. So maybe you can budget a percentage of what was going to be spent on the physical event um, to the online event, like 30 to 50 percent, for example. Uh, another thing would be if you do have the budget, another great way to ensure your delegates remember your event for all the right reasons is to weave in an activity uh, post-event. There are all sorts of quizzes, escape rooms and other team building activities that can be factored into the event. 
So we've ass attended and organized as well some events that have used Kahoot as a low-cost feature in their webinars. Used correctly, it can be fun and helps retain information. That's why the kids in Singapore love it when they have to, uh, after their, their home-based learning and on online learning uh, sessions. So the last thing I wanted to mention is, is certainly one of the most important. Please do budget for the Safe Management Managers or SMM that has been mandated by the Singapore Tourism Board and Ministry of Trade and Industry. Guidelines and samples can be found on STB's website and it's a good place to start when thinking about planning an event uh, up to or past 250 packs moving forward, hopefully. Uh, that way there will be no surprises when budgeting for your upcoming event because there will be uh, costs when it comes to planning of the SMM. You can find out more about this uh, later on in the, the program when Vincent uh, talks about uh, the, the, the SMM and some of its procedures. So in summary, I just wanted to reiterate that going virtual will definitely save on travel, meeting space, on-site staff, badging, printers, and, and audiovisual rentals and stuff like that. They also mitigate risks associated with travel and many other uh, items that come with organizing a large event. Now that being said, uh, we do have companies today who are grossly overestimating the savings uh, of moving face-to-face -face events, uh, either hybrid or totally virtually uh, or to virtual formats. Uh, we just have to remember that there will be additional costs that come with producing an event uh, that meets the overall objective in a professional way that befits the image of the company or brand. Uh, in the meantime, we're all still uh, finding our footing, but I'm sure we'll come out of this stronger and wiser. So, yep. So, so, so that's all from me. I, I hope you found this useful. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks for listening and all the best. Back to you, Kim.